what is good guys it's ray j back with another video and in this one i'm going to be talking about the one and only spy the nasdaq the qqqs and the indices right down what's going on with the overall market and why you need to be very very careful right now what i believe is likely to happen over the next few weeks to the stock market i believe the market's in the topping process and i believe that very soon we're either going to see another pump from spy uh to form its final top before this thing starts to cool off by next week or we might end up seeing this thing just start cooling off from here and fail to get that last pump. But overall, I am leaning more towards the downside over the next couple of weeks. I do believe we could pump a little bit more before so, but I believe we're in a topping process. I'm going to break down some technical signals that are suggesting that by looking at the VIX, the SQQQ, and the NASDAQ, and uh, many, many other indicators out there, and break down why I believe this is very likely to happen. But before I break anything down about why that is and what you should be watching for going forward, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. Make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Mumu, the link down below and deposit 100 bucks into the account, you're guaranteed up to 10 free stocks, each worth up to $2,000. And the best part is any could be a free Tesla share. The offer ends in just a couple of weeks. Check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So now let's break down what's happening with the market right now. The PPI report came out lower than expected, so that was pretty good for the markets. But initial jobless claims came out much higher than expected. But that's also technically good for the economy in a way, because for the short term, we want some pain so that the longer term will not be as detrimental, right? Uh, the Fed has to rug pull us for the short term. The Fed has to cause a recession for the short term. Uh, and when I say short term, I'm just talking about the next like year or even just a few years because the next decade will not be as bad because of it, right? We need to bring down inflation. There's all this stuff that has to be done for the like not so long term uh, before we start to see any growth or recovery. And it's necessary that the economy has these corrections. But anyways, so with all of this going on, uh, the market has cooled off so far. I mean, the QQQ is still quite green, but the S&P 500 is a little bit in the red as of right now. We're very close to close. And for now, I want to break down tomorrow too. So for tomorrow, we have some Fed speakers. We have some exports and imports data coming out. We have some Michigan consumer sentiment data. That's going to be very important too. So make sure you're on the lookout for this. And be very careful for the first 30 minutes of the day because lots of data is coming out. Then we have some Fed speakers after the market closes. But the Fed speakers will be important. And besides that... The data is not as significant compared to the previous days. Wallers came out, or I'm sorry, Waller, he came out and they ended up speaking about climate change and other things like that. Nothing was too crazy from the Fed so far. And as far as the data goes, for SPY for tomorrow, we have about a 1.6 put to call ratio, about 700,000 puts expiring and only 450,000 calls expiring. So right now, the odds are favoring uh Right now, there are more like puts out there. So the market makers may try to squeeze them or even hold the market up. But I don't predict it's going to be like anything extremely massive compared to what's about to come over the next few weeks. And I don't consider this the bigger move. I just see this as an opportunity. So let me break down what that opportunity is. Um, I can't guarantee that the market will even like get a massive short squeeze this time around. I am leaning more towards that the market could push up a little bit uh, by the time we get to tomorrow because of the uh, options. But... I don't think it's going to be the bigger move, right? It is possible for us to pump just a little bit more, but we have a head and shoulders like formation forming. In order for us to turn really bullish, okay, we have to break 417.62. I don't think that's going to happen. I am open to the possibility, but I don't think it's going to happen that way. I'm thinking that the market will likely make an attempt to try to push up a little bit more and then fail. Maybe try to fill this gap and complete the right shoulder because we have a left shoulder ahead and maybe the right shoulder is forming. And then the bearish signals I have uh, are going to lead to more downside for the markets by the time we get to next week and beyond as we approach June. I think SPY is going to get, get closer to these lows it made, this 403 area, if not even lower. And I think there's more downside to come as we approach the next few weeks. So that's going to be a much bigger move than simply trying to just catch a, a, you know, a few dollars to the upside. And I believe that's very likely to happen. And I'm going to break down more reasons as to why that is. 
First off, on SPY, there's a bearish divergence that has developed right here, and the RSI is continuing to trend down. There's another bearish divergence that developed right here, so that tells me that uh, as the market came down today, I mean, there's no guarantee it has to just play out immediately. Uh, this tells me that the market might start downtrending from here, or it could get one more push up and then start downtrending. But either way, the downtrend is likely coming by next week. It's likely going to start next week, and we have some time going forward. I want to warn you guys in advance about this, because if I start warning you guys like next week, the market is likely going to already start downtrending. So it's going to be too late. So that's what I'm seeing on SPY. I'm going to give you more reasons as to why I believe that. On the one hour time frame, there's not a whole lot going on. It's holding up okay so far. It became very choppy. It is a little bit red so far. Uh, not much of a divergence in either direction. And it is looking like it's losing some momentum. Now, the bullish case would be that it's possible like inverse head and shoulders leading to like one more push up. That's a possibility, right? But I'm not counting on it being too big unless we break 417 plus, then we could get to 420. But I'm not really counting on that. I think it's more likely we just get one last attempt to push up and then we get the rug pull or we could just get rug pulled very soon. We just chop around tomorrow and then get rug pulled. Either way, it's likely coming next week. Now on the QQQ, <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, guys. I apologize. On the QQQ, uh, there's a clear bearish divergence developing. Uh, looking at it, the MACD is making the slower high. RSI is doing the same thing on the hourly time frame. Price is making a higher high, but it's getting weaker and weaker. On top of that, when you zoom out, I think this looks better on the daily, but there's clearly a rising wedge on the QQQ. These are not bullish. These are bearish, ultimately. On the daily chart, the same thing is developing. So we can zoom in a lot more. I could have like drawn out the whole thing, but I, but just for simplicity, I made it very small just to encompass this latest move. It looks to me like this thing is in the topping process. Uh, there's a bearish divergence also forming on the daily. Uh, right here, very clear bearish divergence. The QQQ is likely going to do two things. Either it's done and it just starts tanking from here, starts coming all the way back down to 320 or even lower than that, back to the 310s. Uh, over the next few weeks, or we get one more push tomorrow, one more push to the top here, it gets like 327 or so, and then it's just done. It just starts downtrending over the next few weeks. I believe it's extremely likely that one of those two will end up playing out. Now, on top of that, I want to note that the VIX has a bullish divergence, and so does the SQQQ. So in the SQQQ, uh, it's pretty evident that this thing is looking bullish. We have a bullish divergence that's been forming since April, actually, right? On the daily chart, this thing is likely going to get a breakout by the time we get to June. And I believe it's going to fill this gap up here to 31. It could even get closer to 33.5 by the time we get to June. It is due to start bouncing soon. It doesn't have to start tomorrow, but it could start over the next, I would say, week or two. I believe it's very, very likely. On the one hour time frame as well, so on the smaller time frames, I think the same thing was developing. We have a bullish divergence still on the smaller time frames. So like right here, you could even start it from uh, just a couple of days ago. This bullish divergence was developing. It's going to bounce soon. So once again, I'm not saying the market has to crash tomorrow, but I am saying that over the next few weeks, it's very likely a significant pullback is coming. Why? It could be so many different reasons. When the charts tell us this, the data is going to come out to cause it to happen. Why? Because Wall Street knows this. This is how they play their games and this is how they make their money. But they could be planning one more pump tomorrow to start repositioning if they haven't already to just start shorting at the top. And then they're going to drive the market down to make those profits. The SQQQ is telling us, okay, the market is likely going to see downside very soon. Uh, could start Friday. I'm not, not too sure about Friday, but I would say by next week, most likely this thing is going to start pumping. That's going to happen as the QQQ ends up dropping alongside the S&P 500 and SPY and NASDAQ and many others out there. On the VIX, there's not too much on the one hour time frame. There's a gap down here, I believe. I think there's a gap around like the 15s. So the market could get one more pump as the VIX comes down for the final pump. And then the VIX is likely going to find its bottom and start bouncing. That's very, very likely. There could be one more pump left for the market. But the VIX, here's the thing about the VIX. For the short term, yes, it is possible for the VIX to drop a little bit. For the more medium term, which means like by next week going into like as we approach June. So approaching June, uh, the VIX is looking very bullish to me. It looks bullish because 
there's a clearly a bullish divergence. The MACD is turned with the crossover on the PPO. And the VIX, I mean, it's continuing to get rejected, but it's very undervalued, right? It's well below the 200 EMA. It's going to retest this soon. And what I'm thinking is the VIX is going to get a breakout. Uh, we have an uptrend right here uh, on these technical indicators, bullish divergence. It could come down just a little bit more, but it's going to break out by next week, probably. Maybe even approaching June, it's going to get an even bigger breakout. So I expect this thing to be around the 20s by June time, if not closer to 30. So I'm expecting a big breakout on the VIX very soon. And once again, it's going to cause downside. It's going to be, sorry, it's going to be uh, happening because of the market seeing some downside, right? This is not causing the market to tank. This is just an indicator that we could use to give us more knowledge about how things will play out. Uh, I'm going to talk about the dollar and Apple just briefly. I think Apple is also forming a negative divergence. The price has been uptrending, but the RSI is showing us a downtrend. The RSI is telling us that it's losing lots of strength. And I'm thinking two possibilities on Apple, okay? This thing might pump a little bit more to get to that 175 area, maybe a little bit higher, and then it's going to get rug pulled. It's going to come all the way back down to 165 over the next couple of weeks. It may take you know, a little bit longer, maybe like a month to get that low. Or it could be done here because we're on the verge of getting, I think the market's about to close and we have an indecision candle. Uh, Apple is pretty flat right now. We could be forming a doji for the reversal. If that's the case, then Apple could start downtrending. And I do think downside is coming anyways. But I'm seeing two possibilities, either a final pump and then downside or just downside going forward. I think that's going to be the bigger move. And I'm not really playing this as much to the upside. I mean, I would I would scalp it, but then I would secure profits and maybe start shorting at the very top. Uh, that's what I'm seeing a topping process on Apple. And then on the dollar, here's the uh, other interesting thing. The dollar is also forming a bullish divergence right here. I think it's on the daily chart, or it's either the daily or the weekly. It should be forming a bullish divergence. The dollar... I mean, on the RSI, it's been just consistently uptrending and uptrending. I think the weekly is where you could see the real bullish divergence. So looking at the dollar, I mean, you could see the RSI was, the bottom is right here, but the RSI continued to go lower as this thing dropped. So I'm looking for a potential breakout from this wedge. Uh, once again, it's looking more and more bullish as the days go on. You could also zoom out even more and see how the RSI was moving. I think on the daily, it shows you this. Let me just double check this for you guys. So looking back, like right here, you can see there's a bullish divergence. Uh, the RSI and MACD are much higher than where it was back here, but the price is much lower on the dollar. That tells me the dollar is going to break out likely over the next couple of weeks, maybe in a month or so. Does it have to be a huge breakout? It doesn't have to be extremely massive, but it could be somewhat significant. And that would help the markets pull back even more. Now, the HYG is starting to sell off more. And when this happens, this tends to be bearish for the markets. Um, it formed a bearish divergence right here. So the smart money, the bonds traders are starting to sell. Smart money is selling a lot more than before. It has a lot of gaps down below. And that's going to lead to more downwards pressure for the S&P 500 in the market. NVIDIA, it looks like a good short to me. Not, not financial advice, by the way. But there's a bearish divergence here. I was telling you guys about this, and I told you NVIDIA could come down in my previous video. That's what happened. It came down to my target of 285, and I told you if it broke that, it could get closer to 280. So far, it's doing what I expected. Uh, but the question is, how is it going to continue to move? I just don't know exactly the timing of these divergences. We could get one more pump for NVIDIA tomorrow, one more pump, and then it starts to sell off. Or if it doesn't get the pump, it could just sell off anyways from here. But the bigger move and the better move is going to be the downside. Uh, for Tesla, Tesla has some relative strength to it. Uh, I'm seeing signs that Tesla might try to pump a little bit more. It could try to get to 175 first before it does reject. But it was holding the 200 EMA quite nicely on the one-hour time frame. So we could see Tesla actually try to make its way up to about... Uh, almost 175 again and could try one more attempt if the market tries to pump again. But then we're likely going to see Tesla come down and retest this and maybe even break below it if we end up seeing 
uh, the bearish signals play out, which I believe they most likely will over the next few weeks. Tesla is the gap at 178. I mean, it could even get close to filling it. It is a possibility first uh, outperforming the market to try to do that first before it gets the rug pull. Uh, it's still a real possibility. For Coinbase, I mean, it came down as I predicted. I told you this would likely see some downside thanks to the bearish divergence. Um, I'm seeing signals that this thing may continue to do so. It depends on if it could hold the 50 EMA. So if it breaks below it, it's going to come all the way down to about 58. If it holds this, it could try to bounce and you know make its way back to 62. I'm not saying the market has to crash tomorrow. The market could try to bounce tomorrow and even get you know one more attempt for a pump. But I, like I said before, I, I'm not going to be buying up there. I'm going to be more likely trying to short the markets or even sell at the top, sell whatever it is I want to sell. Not financial advice, by the way. But like I said before, the bigger move is going to be to the downside, so be on the lookout for that. Finally, for Meta, holding up quite nicely. I told you guys Meta might try to uh, retest this trend line and try to bounce very, very soon. Meta did actually bounce because we were forming a bullish divergence. I mentioned this yesterday. Uh, and now, I mean, it is uptrending, but you could argue that it's starting to flag a bit. So be careful with this. It also has a bearish divergence that has developed right here. So that's telling me that Meta might see some very choppy price action. I mean, it could try to pump a little bit more, but as long as the divergence remains, we're likely going to see downside later on, just like for the rest of the market for the next couple of weeks. Ten-year Treasury yield came down with the markets, so this is very ironic. This is not moving like the way it used to, so I may not even use this as much temporarily. But it does have. It, there's not much else going on with it, right? It might come up to fill this gap, so it, it tells us the market could try to bounce tomorrow, but not counting on too much upside left. I think the market's in a topping process. Downside is still very imminent. And finally, for Microsoft, I'm going to end the video with Microsoft. This, to me, formed a bearish divergence, so I told you Microsoft might get a pullback, retest the 50. That's exactly what Microsoft did. I, I, I'm not sure uh, if this is done yet or not, so it might try to bounce off the 50 one more time if the market pumps tomorrow and then come back down to 305 or it might just go straight to 305. But either way, I see downside coming. If it pumps a little more, you know, that's a short opportunity, and then it's going to come down to 305. If it fails to do so, if it breaks below the 50, that could be a very bearish signal, and it could end up coming all the way back down closer to the 200 EMA, around 304.5 to 305, okay? So that's what I'm seeing for Microsoft. More downside is going to be the bigger move. It could pump a little bit more tomorrow before the downside comes, but I am leaning more towards downside for the next couple of weeks. I will talk about other stocks, but I believe these moves these moves are going to be correlated with many different stocks, right? Small pump tomorrow, possibly before more downside for next week. I think the market has a very healthy pullback coming by the time we get to next week and beyond. So be very careful. Uh, even if we see the market pump tomorrow, I'd, I'd be very cautious anyways. The only thing that would turn me like really bullish would be if SPY breaks 417 and holds it, then it's going to fly to 420. But so far, I think it's unlikely seeing how shoppy it's becoming and the fact that we get lots of these sell signals developing simultaneously. All right, so thank you all for listening. I hope you guys found some value in this video. And I just want to note that I have some merch for you guys if you're interested in buying anything. If you want to buy a shirt, a hoodie, a tank top that says to the moon or eat, sleep, trade, repeat. Or if you want to get some free stocks from Mumu, the offer is down below. Put in 100 bucks and you're, go you're guaranteed, excuse me, up to 10 free stocks. The offer ends very soon. Thank you for listening. Have a great day, everyone. Uh, the market to the moon as the long term is still very bright. And peace out.